Hi guys, I'm Dave for those of you that do not know me and today we've got a busy day in the workshop fitting some one-piece glass and there's going to be a lowdown on this car that is for sale and up for grabs. So what are we doing here Louis? We're changing the side glass. Just changing the glass or is the whole thing coming out for a panoramic? Everything is coming out for the fixed one. These are the sliders, those ones that you can open, but... So what's the process of getting one of these out if somebody wants to do one at home? Oh. The process is you need to warm it up all around and with the Stanley blade to cut the seal. So you've got your young apprentice friend here helping you out? Yeah. yeah. It's like a two-man job. Oh. Okay. This is the master teaching the apprentice then, is it? Yeah. <laughs> what, your, what do you do outside work, Louis? Me? Yeah. Um, last weekend I tried water ski. Hey. Yeah. Oh, How did it go? How did it go? Yeah, I still can feel it. <laughs> Where does it hurt most? My ass. <laughs> and back, and the neck. <laughs> Did you fall off? Oh, big times. You don't fancy mountain biking with Nicky? <laughs> mountain biking, oh. Uh, yeah. And what about you, what's your hobbies? Uh, <laughs> Jacob, come on. My hobbies. Women. Like Dave said, entertaining women. <laughs> 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 And how do the women feel about that? <laughs> what do you do outside work? Well, outside work, I go to the gym. I like traveling as well. Just come back from a holiday. Just come back from uh, in Spain. We had a good laugh. <laughs> we had some bad experiences as well. <laughs> Any that can go on camera? Some can. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this like? No, we've prepped uh the side, whereas you could go the Instaglac in. Right. So this is like a primer. Uh, before we wipe it with the um, alcohol wipe, it see come like a kit. Yeah. Yeah. So you got this primer. You need to apply to the body. We need to leave it drying to get dry. In the meantime, we're gonna prep the glass. We're gonna put the. Let me show you here. We're gonna use this to stick the glass the glass to the to the body. Mm -hmm. It's a very very good stuff. This. How long have we got to leave that primer to dry? Like overnight. It'll be all right. Oh, so this isn't going until tomorrow? No, no, the, the primer. Yeah. Oh, just like 10 minutes. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And the primer then activates that stuff there, does it? No, it just sticks better to, to, that, to the body.
How long do we have to leave it? The primer needs to dry a bit. It's not dry yet, so. I don't want to put this yet because we'll just stay there. And what's the trick for using this silicon? Oh, it's the best thing to, to steal for glass, I mean. It's a battery powered one, right? Yeah. Proper tool. Like its user. <laughs> okay. And just when it goes, it goes this. Oh, don't tell me. It's coming. Has it got a clamp that like pulls it in now? Um, yeah, there are some plastics. They come like this. Yeah, you need to put them between the the body and the, the side panel and the glass. But we got something else. A piece of wood. So it's, it's keeping this tight there. Eh? It. So what are you using the wood for, Louis? The wood. Oh, I see. To, to push. Uh, the... Instead of using like a clamp to hold it to the to the side panel, you push the, this because you can't use a clamp, obviously because it's... you push this wood so we hold it. <laughs> Tie to the body like that. Sure. Or so like a sandwich. How do you? That's it. The glass is in now. Just waiting to dry off. So, as you've seen today, our lovely model and technician Luigi has installed these windows. So, if you want these windows fitted to your 110, it's £995 plus the VAT. So, it transforms it. There's no rattles, there's no leaks anymore. There's nice drainage holes if any moisture does get within the frame so they can't condensate. And the best bit is, is your row E trims fit in there perfectly. And they come with a lovely rubber trim, so it doesn't even get drafty. There you have it, guys. So would you do a slam? I would, yeah. I think it would what would you done. do then? What do you mean, how to get it work? Yeah. Would you have to make a new chassis, Darren? No. No? You would, it would dry, but you'd only have like an inch of bump, I would imagine. Something so we like need that. to give some thought. It'd take a bit of thought to do it, yeah. You're laughing at. Dave, Dave has told me that if I can get you on camera, he'll actually pay. Give me a pay rise. Even better than that, he'll pay for your tyres next season. Eh? He'll pay for your tyres next season. Genuinely, straight up now. Right, look, look on this. Am I recording? 
Yeah, it's just rec, yeah. Did, so he this, say, did he say how many tyres? This is evidence. So if we get you on camera this week, yeah. Dave's going to pay for your tyres next week. I'll do week. A piece, to, piece to the camera if you really want me to. He's going to put it down in his pocket and tighten it. There we go. There we go. So we've got a piece to camera off oh, Darren yeah. if I can get four tyres out of him next week. What does the girl want, Ed? <laughs> Not a clue. Not the right person to ask. Well, it is, yeah, because the ones he normally goes through for cost him about 60 quid for half hour. So you know what they want, don't you? Not Money. not not McDonald's by the sounds of it. That's an expensive dinner. <laughs> Darren, we don't get to see you in the video as much, but I, I'm I'm led to believe that you might have a chat with me. Maybe. What are you doing? Wiring up air suspension. Air suspension. Which vehicle's this? Uh, Churchill, I think. Churchill. The new one, this is the old one. Mm. Oh, yeah, I got pimping a series, that would look That would look good. Dave, what's one mod that you haven't done to a Defender that you would like to do? Put something electric into one that actually good as more than 100 miles. <laughs> Controversial. Yeah. So what have we been up to this week? Uh, basically, we're uh, customising the fuel tanks uh, to basically fit any any of the Land Rovers. Because um, the, the, the big problem we've got is the design of the tow hitches. Um, sometimes they're poking out, sometimes they're poking in. Um, and the, the brace of bars are sometimes different. Uh, so we want to be able to put a tank in that's uh, it's got more capacity. Um, I mean, we tested one the other day, and the bog standard tanks are normally about 70, 80 litres, but the ones that we brought up are like 115, 120 litres. So it's still fit in the same. Of increasing the range, but if we fit something like a Chevy engine, which is a lot more thirsty. Exactly. The yeah. owner's not going to notice it so much. Well, obviously, in the pocket, they might do like, but other than that, I mean, yeah, so. Um, What's it with it? This one here. So what have you what have you had to do to make this? Uh, well, the bits already come in pre-cut and um, lasered, and we're just putting it all together. But having to notch out um, beforehand before we start building it, the um, the notch out for the bars, which which this is what I did earlier. Well, there's a couple of them, but this one's what we normally do is we'll put, this is this was made before I got my hands on it really. Um, 
but to, to make it fit every vehicle, this is gonna to have to be notched out. But it was already built beforehand, so I've had to like do all a lot of cutting and messing about, where now I'm doing it before I build it and making templates for, you know, the, the cutout pieces and that. So this that you're building on your deck here then could go into any of the Land Rovers? That we've Pretty got. much, yeah. You, I mean, like with obviously the different models, you're gonna to have to mess about a little bit, but the, the main design is the same, really. Right. What I'm gonna be doing is putting the back on it and then uh, building the slots to go in there. So yeah, so when you do come in for a new tank, this is what this is what it'll be looking like. More capacity, but it's still going to take the same amount of space. Right then, Nicky, what's going on this week? Just giving our man John a hand doing the fuel tanks. Uh, basically, this is where the filler neck is, the breather, just parts for the fuel tanks, welding them up, ready to go. Give John a hand. So it's like quite a new thing then, having the fuel tanks ready made, not necessarily specific for a certain build. Yeah, you know, every tank will fit every defender in the end. You know, there's little niggles at the minute and refining things basically, so it's, you know, spot on like. So what's the tricky bits in this? Uh, it's probably no tricky bits, but obviously John's been modifying them for the tow bar and the tow bar brackets obviously that wasn't a thing when they were first done so obviously that's all done now just all a little bit putting them together now so some pretty fancy welding inside there yeah you know it's got to be welded good and decent you know, the last thing you want is a fuel leak you know that's the last thing we want as welding them you know how do you test them obviously because they've got to be yeah when they're completed and fully welded we will bunk, bung up all the ends We've got a bit of a pressure gauge adapter that goes on here and um, we'll fill it with air and water. Right, so Andy, you're new here. Yes. What are you doing? Uh, recovering a dash for uh, a Puma, I think it is. Um, doing it with the silver stitching, so as it matches the original style um, seats. So hopefully we can do it as an option then for people to purchase if they want. And have you had to cut all of this out? Do you use stencils? Yeah, these patterns. Um, Use the patterns which are knocking about somewhere. All the patterns have been cut. Um, use those, mark them out, cut them out, then sew them up, and then the 
a painstaking job of then gluing them all on. Yeah, so what is the process of actually attaching it to, I guess this is the original plastic? Yeah, just give it a good rough up, a key, um, degrease it with al some alcohol, um, and then take it from there. Just uh, take it a bit at a time. Glue too much at, at once, then you, you can end up unstuck, so it's better to do it a piece at a time. And what, what glue do you use for stuff like this? Um, this is a contact adhesive. Put a coating on each side and then just uh, attach and then it, use a bit of heat. It just reactivate it and make it a stronger bond then right. to the materials. And uh, how do you get it around all the various different contours then? Are there any tricks for that? Um, heat can be used. So I use a heat gun and that can you can, it makes it more pliable the leather then and it'll stretch a little bit more so you can feed it round when you get like the tricky bits around the vents there use some heat and you can you can draw it round and it goes in quite well and if somebody's thinking of doing something like this at home on their own Land Rover any tips for them take your time just take your time with it don't don't try and do too much at once do it in pieces and just work at it that way Right, Bruno, what are we up to this week? Back in the booth? Yeah, still in the still in the booth. We are. Um, we've had a bit of a slowdown just waiting on something, but what we were waiting on were these nice, lovely brackets that we've had freshened up from the powder coater. Now, obviously, Cerberus, which is obviously this truck that I'm working on, is running airbags rather than the standard springs. So that means that the shock isn't running through and bolt into the top of the turret. We need these special turrets uh, and these special brackets. So then the shock actually mounts here rather than going through the spring because obviously it can't go through the airbag. So that's what I'm cracking on with at the minute. And then it can be taken out and have the brake lines put on. It's looking nice and clean under there. Yeah, loads better, isn't it? Loads better. It's a nice finish. Is that, have you done all that up inside the arch? Yeah. So these had galve arches that were looking, they were looking a little bit tatty. So with the arches, we used the shot blaster, just blasted up in the arches, get, get rid of all the, all the crusty stuff. And then, yeah, it's just had all the three stage treatment. And yeah, it looks day and night better in my opinion. It looks loads better a lot cleaner and yeah it's just be just a lot a lot better lifetime it'll have now if we could build any vehicle here obviously it needs to be a land rover but what would you do to it Ooh, that's a that's a good question that is a really good question i would I would probably have one of these LS3s with a great big Whipple supercharger on them because the sound it is, it is awesome. Uh, especially when you have the, I think it was, oh, testing me with the name now. Testing me with the name Wombat. With Wombat, it had where the, uh, where the air filter was located, it was getting a lot of airflow into it. And because it was close to the bulkhead as well, you could hear a lot of the whine from the supercharger and I, yeah, it sounded, sounded awesome. So what I, what I would have is something very similar to Cerberus, but just a different colorway. And that would just be, yeah, my, my dream Land Rover, I think. So. And I'd imagine you'd employ somebody like Dave to tough coat it all underneath for you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Get Dave to do all the tough coating and get it looking spotless.
Darren, there is something we've got to discuss here, isn't there? Come on, Darren. What? What was the agreement? You can ask him. I said I'll buy him some tyres for next season. And Darren wants to know how many tyres. Well, it depends how good he is, isn't it? Four seasons worth, Jesus. You're Darren thought it might just be the one, he said that wouldn't be enough, he needs four. That's what kind of thing he did. Might be spare. <laughs> right, Ed. Yeah. What engine would you put in a Discovery 3? Is that a serious question? Uh, it's a serious question. We've been asked on our, on our Instagram. Oh, I see people, there's a lot of people on Facebook and that seems to be putting the M57 in the Disco 3 but it, it's quite complicated to get all the original air con and all the bollocks that the disc has got The M57, got that's the BMW engine that yeah, we put in. Yeah, what we fit here. There's, yeah. a, there's a few people who have done it. I think um, I think Wiseman's have done it as well. They built a disc of free one in, but it's a lot of messing around to do. Obviously, other than that, there's not really any other engine choices to go in simply because the TDV6 engine is, sh is shit like. It's not very good, but... The M57 is, would be a choice to do, because it's got plenty of power to go with it, but yeah, well, not really any other engine choices to go in with, really. And it's just a bit complicated. Yeah, the M57, it goes in, but you have to get a, at the minute, I think it's, you get a control module from Russia. There's a guy in Russia doing them. To get it to work. You have to chop the sump to get it to fit in there. You get you need an adapter from the BMW X5 gearbox, auto box, to the land, to the Discovery 3 transfer box and then you can get all your retaining functions working and all that. It'd be a really good, because the Disc of Free is a good car. It should, if you could get that engine working you know, easier, it'd be a really good choice to go in one. But just, at the minute, they're just a bit complicated to go in, not really worth it. Bruno, we've had a question from Tom Corlett 99 on Instagram. The entire chassis of my 87 Defender is really rusted. What should I do? Well, what you should do, Chris, Cerberus here is the perfect example. Uh, what you should do is definitely come bring it to us. And the process we put it through is we pick the front up outside with the forklift give it all a proper good steam in, jet wash off underneath, which obviously gets rid of all the mud and, mud and other debris like that. And then what happens is, after it's dried off, it comes in here, comes in this booth, um, get it on the ramp, and then we usually take the thing, things like arches off, uh, front bumper comes off, and depending on how bad your chassis is, we'll take axles off as well so we can fully get in and around all the bits. That's usually quite tricky with the axles on. So axles would come off, and then the next stage after that would be to get the blaster going. And we'd give the chassis a proper good blast so it goes back down to bare metal. Um, nice, shiny, bare metal. I've not, I've not got an example in here for you at the minute, obviously, because it's the finished product now. And then what will happen is we have um, a product from Kent called, there's, here it is, called Rust Converter. So we spray a bit of that on, and um, just on the bits that were especially bad. So it gives it a bit more protection, eats away at any more rust. And then after that we have, we put on a layer, I've not got it in here at the minute, but it's called Graphene Primer. And what that does is reacts really well with the chassis, sticks really well, and um, yeah, it's the best sort of primer that you can use for priming the chassis. And obviously once that's dried, we then put the top layer of tough coat on. And the tough coat comes in a, comes all in bottles rather than a can. We put it in some hot water, and, and then yeah, we, we spray it on. So that is the process we do and then obviously we leave it to dry and once it's fully dried we start building it back up and if you want nice shiny new parts or 
nice powder coated parts, then we can also do that for you as well. So that's our, that's our full steps of one to, one to finish product of what we do with our rusted chassis. Sounds good for a rover, doesn't it? I think we should do um, merchandise, phone cases. <laughs> There's some fans out there that buy them. This is the proper summer vehicle, isn't it? I know, I prefer it with the doors off and wind in the hair, get the roof off. V8 in the air. Since we fitted the Fox shop, she just rides 10 times better. I think it's the soundtrack that needs to sell it. Do -do -do. Turn this thing off. So where do we start? So this is a Rover 3.9 automatic V8, soft top, ready for the beach, ready for France. I wish it could go to America, but unfortunately this has got a galvanized chassis, which is a big no-no in America, which is a big shame. So many people ask, every time I've advertised this car, people always say, is it exportable, is it this? And unfortunately it's not exportable, guys, unless you think you can get in there with a galvanized chassis. Look at the noise of them diggers. So, what's the deal with a galvanized chassis then? It's just a big no-no, it's one of their um, regulations, I guess. It's just, they just don't like it. I think it's something, because it's not authentic and it's not original, basically. So, I pop the bonnet, show you what's in there. <coughs> so it's as authentic as you can get. This is a Rover 3.9 V8. This is probably, I want to say, tickly maybe 190 horsepower, something like that. It thunders along at 60, 70 mile an hour quite happily. It sounds the part. It's got one of our in-house stainless steel exhaust systems. If you look down there, you'll see the tubular headers. Um, Tom made this about, I want to say about six months ago, and it really does sound the part. So the interior in this car has got the full Melvin and Moon charcoal seat cover set. So if you look in here, these are probably the best seat covers I've ever seen or used because we used these in Morocco last year and trust me, I was sweating. So you've got three seats, ideal for those that have got little ones in their lives. And you can also add the extra ones in the back for when they're driving you crazy. So we've got, I wanna say you could probably get one, two, three, four, seven people in this car comfortably. So if you don't believe me, I'll climb in the middle seat. So there you have it guys, very simple interior, canvas top on the dash. It's just, it's very beach worthy. So if you can see yourself in this car, guys, please get in touch. So we fitted this car with our lovely banded steel wheels. 
These are nine inches wide with a fantastic offset that puts the wheel bang on the edge of the arch. If you look there, it just gives the car a cracking stance in my opinion. It's gone with our classic headlight surrounds, our classic grille, tubular bumper to give it that sporty classic twist. Do you think he wants to buy it? Uh, I think he's meditating. Maybe that's what you need. No, my luck, I'd stand on glass. We've got a full weatherproofed, basically, this doubles up is silent matting. So you've got rubber on the seat box, rubber in the footwell. We fit this into a lot of our vehicles because it's, you can basically just swill it out in theory. So it's ready for the beach. So if you look there, it's pretty much, it's sand, sandproof. So if you get in there with sand, get a little hand brush in there, brush it out. Door tops lift off, beautiful mod in the summer, literally two 19 mil nuts, undo them. And it's literally super beach worthy. So people that live in, I want to say the south of France, Italy, just get this car bought until I raffle it or do something crazy with it. And the reason you're trying to pitch it to people in the south of Italy and, and Europe is because it's left-hand drive. Yes, because of the left-hand drive factor. It's a shame, we had a client this morning that came along and he said to me, Dave, if this was a right-hand drive, I would have snapped it up instantly. But unfortunately, it puts a lot of people off the left hookers over here because we're on the wrong side of the road, obviously. But as you can see, it's an immaculate card. It looks beautiful. I don't want to undo it, if you like. It just To me, that's daft. So I'm going to offer this car £50,000. If someone wants it, come and get it, basically. So in here, this is an American walnut deck. So that is real walnut, not this imitation crud that you see on a lot of other Land Rover pages. This is real American walnut with nice stainless trims. And look, I can even sit comfortably in the back. And here is a little storage box. Everyone always says to me, what's in that box? They're really curious about what's in my box. But in this box is somewhere to put your gin and tonic, your jack, and maybe a toe strap if you get it buried on the beach. Don't take it on the beach. So there you have it. Might even take this to Morocco, what do you reckon? I might come with you instead. <laughs> ah, there's a question about that. Yeah. One of the questions we've had from FlowMLX on Instagram, it says, uh, this isn't a question, but please take a proper cameraman with you when participating in Scrum. Now, okay. Um, so I'm doing the vlog, I'm Chris, for those of you who haven't seen the videos before, um, usually it's Ben who's here, but uh, this week it's me, Ben's on his holidays. Um, and I run Eastwood Media and we make the videos here for Dave. Um, we're here one, once a week and we do some extra pickups when some of the cars are ready. We would love to go on Scrum. We've got two little problems this year. Uh, Ben's really busy with work for me um, and I can't free him up. And whilst Dave has asked me to come, um, my wife is expecting a baby uh, just soon after when Scram finishes. So unfortunately this year, I can't free up the time to come out. It would be a 20 day commitment. Um, so we would have to squeeze Dave's arm to uh, find some money for that. Or you can lobby the people at Scram and maybe next year we can go out, maybe me and Ben, plan it, go out and make uh, the, all of the coverage for Scrum Africa. It looks a brilliant event. Uh, we'd love to be involved, but unfortunately this year we can't. So what we're doing this year just to make up for that is we're gonna rig Dave's car with uh, three GoPros internally. Um, two looking back at Dave and Rob and one looking out, um, which Dave can uh, for, um, Dave can hit record on those at any time. And we're gonna give Dave a little bit of training and take one of the GoPros with him to do a bit more pieces to camera as he goes along. I'm sure it's gonna be a great trip and uh, we'll try and get the video edited um, as soon as we can when, uh, when the guys get back. Uh, Dave, we've got some um, questions come through on the Instagram that we posted this morning. Um, are you guys working on a B58 conversion? We are working on a B58, a B58 conversion. The reason why we're not putting it out there, guys, because we're exclusively doing the first one for a very good company friend of ours. So he's going to get the first ones, guys, that's going to be called, and I'm not going to say it because that's his giveaway. And it is in motion and it is very much in process, but his will be the very first guinea pig. So just hold on there. I want to say give me three to four months and it will be about. Okay, from somebody else who doesn't have a proper username on Instagram, how far can you go with a stock 2.2 engine on a 110? A 2.2 engine, I would probably go for minimum 200 horsepower. Well, sorry, maximum 200 horsepower because you will see a piston and you will see a mess on the floor. Uh, from Callum Burke, uh, Dave, what manufacturer of galvanised bulkhead is best for a Puma? 
I'd say stock one, mate. Get it blasted, acid dipped, and send it to your local Galviard, or we can actually do you one. I think the last one we supplied was about 2,500 quid. So there you go. Uh, from I Fly Africa, uh, maybe somebody you might meet on the yep. um, on the scram. Uh, what spare wheel tyre carriers and what options designs do you have? So we're very fond of the Mac and Tenga one because it carries the nylon support at the back. What we don't like is in the fact that they can bounce and bounce and bounce and come loose over time. We want to fill the cars, guys, that just leave us and never come back. And if you really want to do one, if I suggest, uh, I presume you're from Africa, if you use a name. If you're going to do a lot of all-terrain stuff, I'd go with a nice locking one. I know ORE, ORE do a locking one, um, Nakintenga do a locking one. So something that you can physically lock back and something with plenty of support and beef, basically. Would you look into producing or supplying M57 adapter plates for Japanese 4x4s? We've looked into that, guys, and unfortunately Land Rover is our, is our specialist field right now, and I don't want to defer from that, unfortunately. So maybe one day, but right now we're too busy with Defenders. Uh, from Matty, uh, what is your favourite model of Defender to work on? A 90, 110 or 130? And TDI 5 or Puma? Um, we like the Pumas just for the fact that the dash is very simple, but I also love this, like the full retro one. And simplicity, I want to say TDI is our favourite to work on because... There's no canvas in there. And canvas really does test us sometimes. We probably need to do a build video on this, uh, but this is from Tom Corlett. Um, what's the best method of soundproofing a Land Rover? The best method is very good quality carpet and very good quality rubber. You can go down the route of dynamatting, which we do on many vehicles, but if you look in here, this one's actually been like Raptor coated, something a bit different. The wood, if fitted correctly with the correct bonding and sealing, does offer, if you listen to this, a good insulation, anything that creates an insulation gap. So like the right off-road matting in the front, very good thing. I believe Exmoor Trim have now done their own, so you can use either. You know, we're not fond and we're not loyal to one another. Right off-road have supplied us for a number of years, and I believe they're now doing them for Puma, TD5. So that is a fantastic front kit. And I recommend that to anyone because I hit it when I jump in a vehicle and the rubber punches up underneath the pedals. So go for that one. Uh, last one then from Hammy1984. Can you supply galvanised fold-up steps? Galvanised fold-up steps, yes we can. And we've actually got a batch on the way back from um, the galvanisers as we speak. So hold out two to three weeks, pin me an inbox and I'll put you on the waiting list. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.